And a short time ago, I spoke with U.S. Senator Mark Warner of Virginia. He's vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. I started by asking him if he takes the president at his word that he has not worked for Russian interests. One of the questions that I still have is uh, the president has a right to meet with any world leader one-on-one, -on -one, but after that, what I thought was a pathetic performance where the president kowtowed to Vladimir Putin in that Helsinki meeting, why did the president want the notes of that meeting that were kept by the, uh, the interpreter? Why wouldn't he at least want to share those notes with his top people so that he could give them at least a readout? I still think the vast majority of the, or all of the American people, and for that matter, my understanding, even the top well, folks in the Trump administration don't know what took place at that meeting. So it, how do you get to the bottom of that? How do you find out what actually happened in those meetings? Or is it even possible to do that? You know, I, I know there may be in, uh, committees in the House that are going to try to um, subpoena that. I'm, you know, I, I have some hesitancy about that because, you know, interpreters should be able to do their job without um, uh, they owe an allegiance to whoever they are interpreting for. Um, but I think there are legitimate questions that have to be answered here. My hope is that the Mueller investigation, when it concludes, and I hope it uh, it concludes as soon as possible, um, that we will get get some of those answers. Just very quickly, but is it, it so? Am I hearing you correctly that right now you don't know whether or not President Trump worked for Russian government interests? Donald Trump, I'm going to give him. The you know, I'm going to take his word for his statements today, but there are a lot of questions that still need to be answered. And for an individual that constantly says, you know, there's no there there, uh, then he should let the Mueller investigation finish. And when he says that nobody's been tougher on Russia than he is, than he has through sanctions, through other measures, what, how do you respond? I'd say that is not factually accurate on any basis. The sanctions that were imposed were imposed in many cases against his administration's will, at the will of Congress. And we've got right now, real time, in the next 24 hours, his administration is trying to remove sanctions on one of the Russian companies and indirectly one of Putin's favorite oligarchs, Oleg Deripaska. We're trying in a bipartisan way to stop that from happening. Let me turn you now to the government shutdown. Now in its 24th day, Senator, you represent, obviously, the Washington suburbs in Virginia, uh, uh, the state of Virginia, which has so many government employees. My colleague, Lisa Desjardins, who covers the Capitol for us, says she's learned that uh, your Democratic colleague, Senator Joe Manchin, is having a small, private, bipartisan meeting with other members of Congress now to try to find some sort of compromise, some way to break through this. Do you know anything about that? or any other effort to break? Well, well Judy, I'm not going to talk about any specific meetings. I know there's a number of us in both parties talking about how we get the government reopened, the kind of stories that I'm, I'm hearing from federal employees, even if they get their back pay. If you've taken out your money from your IRA, you still got to pay a tax penalty. If you're taking an advance against your credit card, you've still got to pay fees. We had one family last week that brought in their seven-week-old baby, and they tried to get their baby on their health insurance, and the person to fulfill the form was furloughed. So when the doctor gave him a prescription, luckily the insurance company finally put that baby on, on the insurance form. But there are stories like that where people shouldn't have to go through this kind of this kind of stress. And I think actually, and I was a business guy, I was a governor where I had a two-to-one Republican legislature. I think when history looks back at, at Trump's actions, I think business schools will write case studies about how not to negotiate based on Donald Trump, the deal maker's approach. If you look, business rules 101, try to make sure both sides can claim there's a win-win. If you are but, empowering people, you know, try to make sure they can negotiate on your behalf. If you're going to have a workforce, try to bring them on your side. If you're going to do these things, have advisors that will tell you the truth. On every one of those, Donald Trump has broken all of the traditional rules of how you negotiate for successful. And I think, and again, I think it's pretty remarkable that a guy that said he was a deal maker seems to have fumbled this and has hurt so many people in so many ways. But Senator, is there no way for Democrats to say, look, yes, we believe the president's responsible here, but we're going to swallow our pride because there's so much at stake. We're going to go ahead and put something on the table in order to get through this, in order to try to get to some solution beyond. 
Judy, I'm all for additional border security, but it ought to be done and spent in a smart way with modern technology, not with, frankly, fifth century technology like a wall. But what we, we don't know, and, and I, I, you know, we've seen the vice president make offers and those offers get rejected by Trump. We've seen the majority leader, um, Mitch McConnell, pass something to pass 96 to 2 and Trump reject that. And we've seen Lindsey Graham, the, uh, Trump's whisper, try a variety of things. It, the challenge we've got here is nobody knows what Donald Trump will take other than trying to get 100 percent of a solution set that no border expert says is the right way to actually secure our border. Sounds like we are no closer, uh, at least that we know of, this evening. Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, thank you very much. Thank you, Judy.